Hi everyone, uh, I'm just zooming in a little and getting the camera in the right spot so I'll wait for everyone to come online. I've got my eyeballs. So today, this morning, we're going to do a bit of couching. It's a little bit, um, I'm just doing a different project from yesterday. So I'm just going to wait until people hop on. Hopefully I've checked all the bits and pieces properly this morning and it's all going to work fine. I have my wool, which is just an 8-ply, so there it is there, or 12-ply it might be actually. It's a little bit thicker than the other one that I used. I have my couching foot on, which is a westerly couching foot. Um, it's a decorative foot, they call it. And my glasses are dirty, so I'm just going to clean them while I'm waiting. So... Oh, what have I got there? I've got Rado. How are you, Stalker? <laughs> Morning, Chris. How are you all? I hope you got your housework done, Rado. <laughs> all right. So, I'm using this large patterned fabric. Now, really, I just sort of walked in this morning and went, uh, what am I doing this morning? Okay, I'm doing um, couching. What am I going to do with it? I don't know. Oh, look, that fabric looks great. I'll have a go at that. Oh, that wool looks good too. So it's a variegated wool, which is nice. Um, I'll just show you. It's that. So, um, good morning, Stella. So first things first, I'll just get my thread put my foot down and like I said no real plan just thought I'd go with the flow I'm going to loosen up that foot a bit it's a little bit low so when you're using a westerly one they are adjustable so I'm just adjusting it up so it slides over the top of that a little bit better taking off my scarf before I overheat I have a rosanth thread on the top. That's my little bobbin one. I'm just gonna move my fabric, grab that bobbin. When you first start with couching, you really need to have, um, you're holding your bobbin thread. And I'm just gonna put the needle down and make a bit of a knot. And I'm going to, my glass is just fogged up, so I've had to take it off. Um, nope. It's what watching you, <laughs> watching me, watching you. <laughs> and they make a song, knowing me, knowing you. So I've popped that wool behind the, the thread between the needle and the foot. See, just there. And I'm going to grab that and pull it forward. Now, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the needle. So I'm holding on to my tails of my thread, holding on to the wool and putting my needle down and bringing it back up. Lift up my foot and just pull it forward. Pull your, your fabric and you'll find that the, uh, the wool will just come through. Now I'm going to put my foot back down. Now if that wool does, oh yeah, no, it's going to be perfectly fine. I can even use a straight stitch with this one, which will be great. Just grabbing all that bobbin thread. Sorry, my hands are going to be in the way. I'm just going to... Uh, Put a knot in it, just making sure I grab it. There we go. I am going to trim off, and I've got new scissors today, trim off that, which I will stitch in later. And I'm ready to go. Now, keeping my wool nice and lax, I don't want any tension on that wool at all. I have my speed down fairly low. My tension is at free motion tension, so that's at about five and a quarter. And I'm going to, and by the way, I haven't tested this this morning, so the old girl might be unhappy. But she looks pretty good so far. So I'm just going to go up there. Hello, 
and like I said this wool is a bit thicker than the other one and I'm going around I just thought I'd go around them to start with I might miss some of this wool it looks like it is missing a little bit I might have to put it on a zigzag so needle up let's just swap her over to a zigzag make sure it's small at 0.8 all right, it's always worthwhile testing. There we go. Now it's going to catch it better. There we go. Play nice. All right. Um, I hope some, someone's trying to ring me and I'm online. <laughs> All right, so I've gone around that one. So I'm just going to go back in and around. And back down again. up and hopefully the variation in the thread will make it look pretty damn cool. Go back down, go back up, nice and loose wool and it's just an acrylic wool, it's nothing flash, $10 ball of wool or something, doesn't matter. It can be baby wool, you just might find baby wool a bit uh, thinner. You can use tapestry wool. And you can see that it's sort of grabbed some, but not others, but I can go in and fix that. I'm just going backwards and forwards now to fill up that flower. And with the variation in the, the wool, it's going to come out really, really nice. I'm just going to stop and get some slackness on there. Hi Regina, what are you doing up at this time of the night? Hope you're staying safe over there. So up here. And I'm going to move it that way so I can catch it better. There we go. And go up again. going to stop there, move the wall to the other side. Hi Heidi, how are you going? What are you doing? Uh, what time is it over there you guys? So I'm just going around the outside again, bring the wall back over to the front. Always have your wool in the direction you're about to sew. I am going to turn my piece because I like to be able to see where I'm going and I'm just going to go to the next one. All right, so that's one done. So you can make this nice and decorative. It's very, really, really highly variegated thread, variegated, variegated thread. Um, or you can use just one color. You can make them yellow. <laughs> so first one I'm gonna do is around the outside edge. Turn it, I can see. The wall. I want it nice and loose. I don't want any tension on that. And just remembering you'll need to have like a sandwich or a stabilizer. Oops, a day, as I can hear that. Sounds like a bit of shredding. I'll just double check. Oh no, seems to have gone past it. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of stitching. It's going to pull it in really tight and make lots of creases. So the idea is to... Oh no, it's going to break. There it goes, it's gone. So I'll just cut that off. And I'm going to move that forward. Now, you've got one or two options here. I can cut it off or just leave it. So my option is to leave it my thread. I've decided this machine needs to go in for servicing because <laughs> she doesn't want to play nice at the moment. Sorry my hands are going to be in the way. Um, it's, e it's early yet I'm staying home and that's as safe as I can get. I haven't tried couching yet. Oh couching is a lot of fun and with the textile stuff that you do you are going to love the feel of uh, the couching. 
Oh, I'm gonna thread it manually. Like I say, I'll give it one go to thread, and if it doesn't work for me, <laughs> I'll thread it manually. I'm not fighting it. There we go. Now, because I haven't cut anything of this, I can just move it back. Um, presuming my bobbin hasn't snapped as well, I think I did cut it off. Um, I'm going to cut it off anyway. Take out that, just to bury that thread, because effectively, this is going to go inside something. So the back of this doesn't really matter. I'm not entering it into any shows as of yet, but if you didn't want to have a messy back, then you would need to make sure that you uh, cut off and bury your threads accordingly. So disappointed I couldn't come over there this year. And in Victoria, uh, in Melbourne, they've, they've even uh, pretty much isolating certain suburbs or postcoded areas because of the, the virus, um, because people haven't done the right thing and now we've got another influx of it. So, you know, you can draw a picture, you can do whatever you like with this. You can quilt with it. Um, it's very easy to quilt with. Um, I'm probably making it look hard. Hopefully I'm not making it look too hard because it's actually not. I find that with the gloves that I've got on, it makes it easier for me to manipulate the fabric a little bit more. Um, because they sort of just sit nicely on the top of the fabric. I'm just going to go around that outside edge again. Just have to stop and reposition my wool. Maybe next year um, and when we're all healthy, yeah. What was that question? I've seen some, um, hang on. Uh, hello, have a couching foot but haven't tried it yet. Okay, and Stella too. Uh, a COVID-19 super spreader event, very likely a family um, gathering. Yeah, most likely. Michelle, you make everything look easier. <laughs> oh, look, look, I hope, do you know what? I hope so. That way you'll give it a go because, you know, we all start somewhere. You know, you're going to, you're going to start, you're going to make the mistakes, you're going to make knots, you're going to, you know, you're going to do all those things, and that, that's a, what's all, that's what learning's all about. It's about making those mistakes and learning from them. It's no different than when we're kids and we learn not to put our fingers in the socket because it's electrical, <laughs> um, and we don't want to get thrown against the wall. So you know, we don't we don't touch the heater because you know when you learn. And it, apparently, when I was a little kid, Mum had trouble trying to tell me. Go figure. And um, yeah, it does look lovely. Um, and I kept touching the, the heater at my nan's. It was like a, a stove, like a inside heater, wood heater stove. And um, anyway, I was only a toddler, but I kept going and she got sick of do doing it. And like, I mean, I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I wouldn't listen, of course, because I was a toddler. So anyway, this one time, mum just, and all I was doing was putting my, um, my hand on the front of the oven so not the actual top itself but the oven and um, anyway finally mum just decided to uh, let me touch it and I did it once never again <laughs> so we we learn the hard way that's what humans do that's what we do best um, it's a little bit like this COVID thing I think uh, we're all learning the hard way but I think we're doing very very well um, there's a lot of uh, countries out there that aren't and I think that by having these shows um, we're really bringing it to the customer and I think that's um, important we need to keep this, the industry alive As, I've got to put my glasses on to do this hi Judy if it was easier on the sewing machine 
on a Q20. Oh, it'll be much easier on your Q20. Um, Regina, definitely. It's much easier on a long arm or sit down like Sweet 16 or Q20. Much, much easier. Um, because you've got more room. Lots of days. I'm fogging up. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And they're semi-industrial, so they tend to sew through anything, you know. Um, I seriously can't see that because my, my glasses have just fogged right up. Look at that. <laughs> so let's try again. Let's go in there. Good boy. So definitely easier on a uh, mid-arm or long arm. Um, foot down, I'm going to cut off. Hello, um, you have all certainly kept me at home watching. <laughs> that's good, Stella. Um, and that's uh, Nahimi. No, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so I apologise. Um, welcome. People from all over the world joining us this morning. It's lovely. I'm just going to move this wool around. I want that knot in there. And I'll just keep going. I mean you can you can do this on a bag panel and it would look amazing. You know, I um, many years ago did a, a bag panel or bag pattern. I haven't got it now but um, and um, did couching on it and it looked really really good. I've still got the bag, go figure. You definitely don't want those knots coming through. That's just a hint. So if your wool looks like this, like this, pull tight like that, it's not going to catch in that um, under that needle. You need it to be sitting in the direction of the sewing unless you have a guide right near the needle to guide it to that um, where the needle's going uh, that's a different story but if you're doing it um, freelance like I'm doing it right now a little bit organic then you will need to uh, manipulate your thread your, your wool around so I'm going to you can see the colors are starting to change in the wool I'm going to go around this again twist and go around you know you can you can just do one flower amongst all of these flowers and just have the one couched which is you know is, is perfectly acceptable so I'll get through this one flower and then I'll show you what I've got so far okay bit close those ones but anyway as the old saying she'll be right and an Aussie saying she'll be right on the night um, I've just missed a gap there so I can always come back to that that's no biggie if you get a bit wobbly it doesn't really make any difference so you don't have to be a perfect quilter to be able to do this. You just want that wool sitting nice and lax at the needle. And you'll notice that some are higher, some are lower. Um, and if they're too high, it means it hasn't been caught. So I'll go back in once I'm finished and actually stitch them down just to make sure they're nice and secure.
over to the next petal. So anything I've sort of missed I'll catch later. Well, I'm not going to stress over it too much. Um, just giving myself a little bit more wool, a bit of length. Oops, I forgot to go around my petal first. Come back and do that. Will this be a wall hanging quilt block or a bag? Now that's a really good question. I'll take some um, advice from you guys, my uh, quilting gurus. Um, if you would like to make a suggestion, I'm happy to, um, to turn it into something like one of those. is very relaxing um, once you get your rhythm it's very easy I know I like I say I make it look stressful but I'm not being stressful I'm just fiddling with the wool nice and easy but I can see a really nice dark rusty color coming up now so I'm thinking of going back into the ones that I've already done and put a little bit of extra colour in just so that they don't look like half-half. So interesting, Gidget. <laughs> it's fun. So um, you can, if you want to, hold the, the thread up like that and move with one hand your fabric and then the other hand with the wool. But I find that that's sort of a little bit difficult um, I find it's easier to move the fabric with two hands and the wool just give it a flick here and there um, just to get it in the right position. So I'm just going to bring it up over here and I'm go around that petal again. I have missed a spot there so hopefully when I get a little bit of a darker colour which I can see coming soon I'll come back through. My old girl seems to be coping. I haven't had too many breakages, says she. So I'm just going to come up here and just stitch some of these in here. A little bit of extra colour. Why not? And because the flower's actually got some colour behind it in the fabric, so it doesn't look unusual if you do miss a bit. one thing you're looking at is to see how much um, like you don't get a knot going into the hole of your foot because if you get a knot it gets stuck and then you've got to give it a really you've either got to cut off the thread or give it a really tug to, to get it out um, which will probably break your thread anyway so you can see that they're a little bit loopy looking which is fine I'll come back and stitch them at the end <laughs> I'm just going to stop here. You can see I've got some things happening. Um, uh, what's that? Very interesting. Um, I'm taking the idea of uh, covering my dodgy stitches. Uh, liking the idea. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm getting some ideas of things to do with the couching. Good, good, good. Um, that's good, good. I love, I love to hear that there's some inspiration happening. Um, I just got my wool cord on my jacket. Um, so again, and you know, if you're wanting to create a bit of a texture thing, you know, you want it to be lumpy and loopy and all that sort of stuff. You know, if you like felting and things like that, this is right up your alley. All right, so just Getting into there now. I'm going to oops, there's a stop and cut off, and I'm going to pull the foot up. I'm going to trim that off 
just there like that and I'm going to pull it through because I want and we'll see when I get to the color just got to peel it off the wall a little bit there we go coming here it comes I'm thinking a wall hanging of my bird would be awesome yes yes because you can get some really interesting uh, techniques with the uh, the feathers all right looks like we've got the darker one now there we go all right so we'll just bring it back a little Oops, it does. Bring it back to about um, about there I think I'm going to just trim it there pop that wool aside I can use that another time bring it back over needle down I want to catch that little bit of wool are you using a top stitch needle? Um, I'm actually, yep, I'm using a superior titanium coated uh, size 90-40 top stitch. Um, I like to use the larger needles when I do the free motion. It just reduces um, breakage, <laughs> especially the titanium ones because I'm pretty rough. All right, so I'm just filling in that centre bit and I'm coming over and you'll see that little little thing here a little tail I'm just going to snip it off and you might think oh you know it's going to come undone no it won't it will not trust me so I am going in some circles but they're like a ziggy zag circle so they're going to look really nice and textured so you'll see I've got the zigzag on it ensures that if I don't get it on the first round I'll probably catch it on the second and doing the circle sort of looks like a little rosette type effect so coming in there I am going to trim that off there Um, I missed the start. Are you using a zigzag? Yes, Kath, I am. Yep, absolutely. I'm using a, a 0.8 zigzag. Hello, Margaret. Um, now, I've got that in. I can see another thread there, so I'm just going to trim it off. Now, so I've got that little thread there that I cut off. So rather than stressing over trying to bury it, I'm just going to stitch the little booger in. And I'm also going to come up here. There's a couple of them just to go over. I don't want to do it too much because I don't want all the thread showing. I want the, the wool to be visible. Um, and I'm just going over some of those really loose looking ones just so that they don't catch anywhere. Um, and I'm just going to come over here, up there. So there's not a chance in Hades this is going to come undone with all my scratchy stitching all over the place. Um, and you're going to have a really lovely finished effect. So I'm just getting up there. And I notice there's a couple around the edges that are a little bit loose. So I'm going to come up around these edges just one more time just to make sure I got them all. Anything that sticks out, like that, there's, you know, that's um, like a little bit of fluff or something, you can always trim it off. It's not going to come undone. That one's looking pretty good, so I'll just quickly go over it. Two more to go. These can look really good as table runners too, quite effective. And that's it. Now I'm going to trim off, put my wool on the floor, and I'm going to show you what I've done. How's that? How cool is that? All right. So 
I'll just see if I can hold it up a little. Nail it down a little, I should say. There you go. So you've got that really lovely texture. And it is stitched to an inch of its life. Um, and none of that's going to come undone. And you've now put one flower in amongst that whole block. I've just been using Janome, uh, Janome needles. Yeah, you might want to use a denim needle. Um, I think it's a blue one or a purple one. Um, was that a variegated thread, Michelle? Yes, it was, Judy. Yep, yep. It was uh, not the top thread. The actual wool was variegated. So, um, yep, they're... Um, uh, just a just a wool from I think it was from Lingcraft, one of the SNLs. So um, nothing spectacular. But you know, if you had a quilt block and you wanted to do a different colour of say this 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 fabric, um, this is one of the boutique fabrics I've got for sale at the moment at twelve dollars a metre. If you wanted to do a flower in each block and just one flower, and you've got twelve blocks and they're all different colours then how cool, I mean, that's, that's a quilt in itself, isn't it? You know? Um, and if you're only doing one flower per block, it's not going to pull in too much. Um, you give it a bit of a press and she'll be done. So a little bit of a, um, a bit of a high bit there. Just stitch it down. There we go. Um, yeah, so, you know, you've, you've, you've got yourself a really lovely decorative piece and it's 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 um sturdy so all right so i hope you enjoyed that i will see you at the next one i think is one o'clock um and then at 2 30 at craft alive and then at four o'clock so i've got some kids running around stuff in between and um i'll chat to you at the next one so oops a days see you then <laughs>